Hey everyone, welcome back to K&E Theatre Group's Local Spotlight Series. I'm really excited about today's interview. It is completely different. As you can see, I am wearing a t-shirt, if that gives us any idea what's about to happen. Um, just uh, something really quick before we get started. Uh, if you feel inclined to donate because of what we're doing and helping us with our 2021 season, if you're on Facebook, in the comment section below, there is a PayPal link. Click on that and you can donate there. If you are on IGTV or our YouTube channel or on Facebook and want to donate later, you can go to our website, which is KETG.org. Click on support KETG and you can donate there. Well, this is going to be a lot different than what we've done before. We are about to have, on July 3rd of all days, um, our Assassin's Reunion Pajama Party. Yeah. So what's better to start a pajama party than a dance break? <laughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, well, hey! Hi, everybody! Hey! <laughs> So Hello. good to see you all. Oh my Woo. goodness. This makes me so happy. All right. Hello, Eddie. Hello. I'm going to say <laughs> your and name. And then you are going to say who you played. <clears throat> all right. So let's start with the Weber boys. Chris and David Weber. Leon Cholgosh. Giuseppe Zingara. And that's Chris. <laughs> Jean Chiquette. Hello, Edward. Hello. Uh, oh, my name is Gene Shuket, and uh, I played the best known of the assassin wannabes, Samuel Bick. Samuel Bick. Mm. Uh, Christine Voitko. I played Emma Goldman. Paul DeProto. That would be, oh my God, I just blanked. <laughs> <laughs> Charles J. Coteau. That's the Sounds like God, second week of rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Or Lisa opening night. Parker. Sarah Jane Moore. Sean O'Keefe. The proprietor. Tim Riley. Hi, my name's Tim. I am John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Mm. Josh Mason. I was the aspiring assassin, John Hinckley. Autumn Tustin. I was Lynette Squeaky Froome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, enthusiastic <laughs> one. <laughs> Matthew Bussell. I played Billy. Yeah. <laughs> and David Cavillan, who could not be here today, was our David Harold. All right. So I have a couple of questions. One for each of you, actually. Uh, so we're going to start with Autumn. What was the meet and greet like? I know you're, you were new to Caney Theater Group, uh, and so there was a lot of new faces there. What was the meet and greet like for you? Well, Eddie, the meet and greet was, um, I'm so bad at interviews, I just gotta say. So the meet and greet was very interesting for me having just arrived in the greater Pioneer Valley. That's a term I just learned. Um, and so I was meeting a bunch of people that I'd never met before, a bunch of people that I had heard names and rumblings of and um, had come to see shows that I had been in previously. And um, it was just exciting to meet all of these people and put names to <laughs> names to assassin names and see kind of the story come together um and it was it was just exciting and there was pizza so that's always good <laughs> there was pizza there was pizza uh so lisa parker tell us yeah. about the book reports so eddie gave us homework to do a book report on each of our characters and we went around this gigantic room with the pizza and each of us had to do, talk about the research because we were all playing real characters. And so for me, uh, listening to everybody else, it was so fascinating to learn about these people and why they did what they did. And, and they really came alive because the actors were talking about their own characters. And then for me, I, I was really fortunate because a reporter had done a very detailed, in-depth series of interviews about Sarah Jane Moore and published it in a book called Taking Aim at the President. So there was so much information in there that taught me that I am so glad in real life I'm not her. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> now, now, Sean, yeah. you, you were the only non-historical person in the show. You were the proprietor. Mine's so 
Yep. How did you find the proprietor? Um, but really, when it came down to this show, you have a whole bunch of people who are true, real historical people. And somehow, Stephen Sondheim and, the, and who, who wrote the book again? I, I forget who the author was. John, but, John w w Weidman? Weidman? <laughs> who directed this? Oh, no, it's some weirdo. <laughs> Sean, how did you find the proprietor? All right, so he's got all these characters that are real historical characters in time. And how do they interact with each other? Because he's got scenes where they work together. And so I thought, oh, you know, there's gotta be some sort of supernatural element to this whole thing that ties them all together. And I had just gotten off like a six month binge of watching TV's uh, Supernatural. And uh, I had seen these characters on that show uh, called the Crossroad Demons who would make deals with the devil, or make deals with these people, uh, like deals with the devil, where they would sell their soul to get certain things in life. And, uh, and uh, it, it just seemed to work. He, uh, he, he was able to work kind of like a glue that brought everybody in together into the same world. And, uh, and we had fun with him, making him the, a creepy clown. And uh, yeah. You kissed everybody. I did kiss everybody. Oh. Yeah, that was one of the things. Uh, when, when, when we sealed the deal on our contract in the show, every single person received a kiss at some point in time, whether it was blown to them or, or, or put on their forehead or anything like that. And that, was, that meant your, your, your soul was mine. That was it. That was it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, all right, let's go to Gene. Gene, tell us, tell us what rehearsals were like. <clears throat> oh, well. Multi-part answer, <laughs> my specialty. <laughs> I was gonna say, that really? Um, and I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm speaking for myself. I, 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 I'm not speaking for everyone, but I, I can almost guarantee you that I am speaking for everyone. And uh, you guys can agree or, or disagree uh, later in the comments. Um, but um, so when you have a cast of this caliber and you have, and they bring you know, 100% every rehearsal uh, and make the most of every moment and it's also a group of human beings who truly like each other and, and admire each other and respect and love each other. Um, it's any gathering is a joy. This gathering tonight is a joy, just seeing your faces. Um, and so rehearsal, the rehearsal process was joyous. It was just pure joy, two words, pure joy. Um, then, so that's the normal rehearsal with the choreography and this and that. And, and Eddie, thank you very much. You had all the rehearsal scenes laid out well in advance. It was great for planning purposes. Yes, some things change as they always do, but it was very minimal. So it was great from, for planning purposes. And um, lastly, um, you took it to the next level. You sat down with each one of us, if you, if you remember this. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, right. and we talked about, we did character analysis and not, not one meeting, but two dedicated meetings, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, which is unheard of. It's unheard of in, in, in any realm, professional community, you know, it's like to really get to the, you know, to ask the questions and to get to the, the, the crux of these characters, that was extraordinarily cool and helpful. So you combine all that together, the show kicked ass. I mean, it was just, it was great. <laughs> Yeah, it was a wonderful really process. Pure joy. Awesome. I love that answer. <laughs> uh, let's go to Josh. Josh, yes. now talk about, uh, we talked about rehearsals with Gene. How was it as you continued rehearsals, um, how was char doing character development through the rehearsals as you discovered things? <laughs> well, um, John Hinckley, at least in, um, in my mind, actually turned out to be a very scary sort of person. And not least of which of the reasons was because um, every time a new character trait would come up in our discussions and rehearsal and our work with a character, it would be something I would completely understand and recognize to some degree from my past. And so uh, actually fairly early on, Autumn helped me with, with dealing with that by some visualizations that help you get out of character when you're done with the character, because he was a creepy dude. And, um, creepy. and I, I understood him at sort of a visceral level from our work in, in the rehearsals that that was very uncomfortable until you could let it go. And, um, and every time we, we talked about his interaction, especially with, um, with Squeaky, um, 
it was it was a social discomfort that that I recognized from my own past, and I went a completely different direction. I haven't tried to kill any presidents, but <laughs> but there wasn't much about his character. I didn't understand the first time it was brought up in a rehearsal, and that was unsettling. Wow. Which can I say, it's not my turn, but can I just add that I think yeah. <laughs> that's one of the most beautiful things about this show is that there are so many personality traits and quirks and experiences that we all have that these people had that we can, that we can understand from our perspective and see where that took them and, and the different choices that we get to yes. make. And I just think that's so beautiful. Anyway, sorry, it's not my turn. <laughs> Anyone else? No, all right. Um, let's move to Paul. So this is actually kind of uh, piggybacks off of that. So Paul, explain what it was like playing these characters and playing their motivations to do it, not playing them as villains, and then knowing that the audience is going to feel for these characters and sort of feel uncomfortable feeling for them because they know what these people did or tried to do. Mm -hmm. Well, right. And I think it's a, the, the most difficult thing for me. And someone had mentioned, I'm not sure who was not being sympathetic. Um, especially at, at when I was doing my number, you know, and he's realizing that he's going to die. He's going to be killed. And, you know, I wanted to show the, 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 the emotion and the, and, and the despair, but I didn't want to show it as a, I don't know, I did, again, I didn't want it to be sympathetic at all. And it was, it was, it was kind of difficult to do that. Um, but, you know, in keeping in mind who he was and what, like you said, his motivation was and how crazy he was, um, I think there was a balance there of, being a little sympathetic, but being that wacko guy who killed a president. And yeah, uh, it, yeah. It was, it's very interesting, like from, from an audience perspective, watching a show like this, where they're feeling for John Wilkes Booth and they're feeling mm -hmm. for, uh, for Charles Gateau and they're feeling for Giuseppe Zangara, um, they're Liam Cholgas, they're feeling for everybody. And they sort of forget what these people did and tried to do. And then all of a sudden it's like, they do it or they try to do it and they're like thrown back into reality. And they're like, what? You know, and then you have this malevolent like force of the proprietor who's like swinging a noose, you know, at, at Charles Gateau. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. The audience was very taken aback by how they felt towards these assassins um and then like shot back into reality it was interesting to watch um, it's interesting to do yeah mm -hmm. i mean yeah. i was um i was paul's scene partner to jump in again like autumn and i was uh so as an actor i trust and as a friend i trust paul implicitly but character to character like just get away from me and so that feeling yeah. that dynamic of I don't really think I want you to come any closer to me, but um, I love you anyway, but no, get away, get away. It was it, that dynamic tension was really fun to play with on stage. Agreed, mm -hmm. agreed. Anybody else yeah. want to jump in with anything? Okay. <laughs> Before we, we go can't anywhere. jump in if it's not our turn, Eddie. I'm wow. sorry, Autumn. I'm so, just kidding. I always feel like I'm the jumper in her and nobody else does. So jump in. Let's go crazy. Dance break. Speaking of ah. jumping, let's do a dance break. Woo! Yeah. Okay, and that's enough. Uh, so now I want to talk to Tim Riley. Who? Tim. Yes, you. Hi. You leopard print god. Um, hey. So you played probably the most famous assassin There's a, and a cat. Hugh Dorsey. You love that. <laughs> oh, I'm sweating. Um, <laughs> Tim. Oh, really, his name is Hugh Dorsey. If I had I to be that. a Southern 
racist. It's great. <laughs> Why okay. not name my cat after one? Uh, Tim, you played the most famous assassin, John Wilkes Booth. So talk about playing someone so famous and having to bring his story to light and then you extend through the rest of the show. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is that yes, he is very well known. Everybody knows what he did. And every sane person I know is pretty horrified by what he did and why he did it. And so, uh, you know, dovetailing into some of the things that others have said, when you play a villain like that, you still have to tie into that person's psyche and understand that they don't think they're a villain. They, they, they are 100% convicted in the goodness of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, so bringing that kind of evil <laughs> in, in light of current events, if there's a statue somewhere of this man, I hope it's being torn down. Right? <laughs> it's, um, but it's my job to, uh, to, to, to make him sympathetic, mm -hmm. um, to believe in his cause and tell you that I believe in his cause. <laughs> hey, on a side note, as far as the fa his, his level of fame, you know, of course I'm wondering, oh God, you know, I out, I'm, I'm 20 years older than he really was. Is this mustache believable? Is everybody buying that? <laughs> is my hair good? Your hair is fantastic. <laughs> is my accent tragic? I don't know. So all of those things come into it. Um, and a funny, a funny side anecdote. I did a show um, nine years ago um, at a dinner theater in Florida, and the artistic director was a guy named Todd Booth, and he was he was very you know he was like yeah, yeah I'm descended from uh, from Edwin Booth yeah he's a distant relative of Edwin Booth I'm like and John Wilkes <laughs> you're not bringing that up <laughs> and he didn't bring that up because he's like real proud of that that's so <laughs> that's crazy so, um, that's awesome so. Fame was the name of the game. Edwin Booth was probably the best actor of his time. John Wilkes Booth is much more famous. The Booth Ed Theater in New York City, right? They named after mm -hmm. Edwin Booth. Yep, it mm -hmm. sure is. That's awesome. Um, all right, so David and Chris Weber, this is for both of you, actually. Um, your brothers, obviously. So what was it like sharing the stage with each other in something so dark and seeing such a dark side of each other on stage? You want to go first? Sure. Well, one of the nice things was being able to practice and rehearse at home and have at least one person that thought I wasn't a deranged psychopath when I was screaming my song. <laughs> <in> my <room. laughs> and, you know, it was actually, it was helpful having someone to sort of bounce ideas off of character wise. I remember we would um we went out to see the movie joker and after the movie david goes this movie is actually really great inspiration for assassins the show we're working on and i was like oh yeah yeah it actually is so i would go home and i looked up the joker movie soundtrack and i would actually listen to it before i practiced and rehearsed my lines and it helped to sort of get into that mindset and you know it was things like that where we would just spur the moment things where we would find things that would inspire us to you know make new discoveries with the show and yeah that's awesome david and i think for me one of the one thing that was really cool is like just the fact that before and after rehearsals we got to like communicate with each other about our processes and that kind of like inspired us both to like research new things and try new things in rehearsal and one of the things i also loved in rehearsal was just um specifically watching how i saved roosevelt and how much of a haunting number that was and it was like <laughs> watching him it wasn't it was like it wasn't even my brother so no. it was really cool to watch it and be like oh yeah that's my brother i live with him <laughs> awesome oh yeah that's what, I, mean, that, that's what I always i always wondered i was like oh like you guys see each other so happy and, 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 you know, just your brotherly bond and whatnot. So what was it like to see both of you like screaming at the screaming at people and, you know, about to throw a bottle and getting electrocuted and, and things like that. So that was very cool. That's very cool. 
Um, Chris Voitko. Yes. <laughs> now, there were a lot of costume changes in this show. And there I were. know some of you had some really fast ones. One of those fast ones was Chris Voitko <laughs> finishing a number <laughs> and then <laughs> entering immediately as Emma Goldman. <laughs> And I don't know why I did that to you, but it was funny. So tell us about the costume changes. Uh, well, thanks for your love of small casts. Uh, we had all the costume changes. So many. Um, luckily, everybody was willing to help each other out. I know I personally had my stuff everywhere, um, having to go back and forth between the roustabout and um, the other character. Um, there were those moments of, oh my gosh, I got changed so quick. Oh my God, I wasn't supposed to change yet. Oh crap. Uh, we've all had those. Yep. Um, Emma Goldman, that was a special one. That was in the dark and I couldn't have done it without Autumn. <laughs> she was there holding my skirt and the hat and the glasses and that, um, just that coat, everything. I had to make sure he had the pamphlet and the, uh, Sling. The sling. Sling. That was, I think that was the uh, near downfall of that costume change. The sling, the sling was the, uh, the upset, the great upset. Yeah. I <laughs> oh, mean, we did it! Another cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's gonna get spanked. There was, a, there was another moment in this show where everybody in the show uh, just did, um, another national anthem into the, the huge scene with Lee Harvey Oswald. They're all dressed as assassins and then they all exit and immediately come back on in these grays and whites for something just broke. And then they immediately leave and they come right back on as their assassins. And I just remember sauntering around in the back and just, <laughs> just like do 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 and everyone is in chaos. <laughs> oh, costume. And we had it so was, much it was space. Always <laughs> True. It was always um, like this great puzzle of like what layers you needed to leave on and take off and then um, mm -hmm. like an epic sprint every time I never was able to get to my place before going on stage without like <gasps> and then it would be like sprint to get there and then walk on. With yep. all the yeah. coolness. And like, I could see you watching me backstage, like panic and my hair was frazzled and I'm like sprinting to get there. And then, then it, we're there. It's and then you would just see, now. but the best part is, is then you would just see like Matthew, me, Sean, Tim and Hugh Dorsey, um, Dar <laughs> Hugh, Do Hugh Dorsey, right? Yeah. Um, just standing around being like, doo -doo -doo, and everyone else is like, and we're just... <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> All right, I have one more big question for one of you, and that is Matthew. Billy! I... Now, Billy! Matthew, buddy, this is a two-parter. The okay. first part is, what was it like doing a show like Assassins? And the second part is, what was it like working with so many adults? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start off with the first question. Okay. Um, it was definitely different d doing this type of show because I'm used to doing shows like Mary Poppins and The Little <laughs> Mer Mermaid, where I'm like, yippee -dee -dee -dee, I'm happy, and then I come into this show and people are shooting people. I was like, what's going on? I ain't used to this. I was like, Where's the rainbows and sunshine? <laughs> Not here. It cracks me up. Definitely different. But I did really enjoy it because I've always enjoyed history and stuff. Like, that's always been my favorite subject in school. So, like, like for the first time, school actually made sense for a reason. I was like, oh, that was useful in my brain. So now I can incorporate that into this and like learning and it was really cool because I got to learn a lot of new things and like when I do a show I like to research it I like to like research things because like every time I hear something I need to research it right now that's why Google's like the first app on my phone and I go on and just like boop, boop, boop. okay I know this now because my brain's just filled with unnecessary mm -hmm. things but this 
was more unnecessary things. So I really enjoyed that. And it was just really, it was really fun. Now okay. tell me what it was like to, to, uh, to be in a show with so many adults. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that was really different too, because they usually do like community shows with kids and stuff. And I also do the shows at my boys and girls club and those are all kids and it was really cool to do it with like people who have done a lot of shows before and that were experienced so I could learn things from them which I thought was really cool and I had a really fun time it was really different but it was really fun awesome thanks buddy all right the last one is a question for everybody um and I'll say your name and you can answer. Uh, and that is, except I think we lost Josh. <laughs> oh. He disappeared. Um, so we miss him, we love Josh. Uh, but the question is, what do you miss most about the experience? So let's start with Chris Weber. Definitely what I miss most about this experience is that it's not it's very rare that you come across a show like this where everyone has such respect and admiration for each other. And I think that really played a huge part in how the show came out. And, you know, I don't know. It's, it's special to me, and I think it's going to always hold a special place in my heart. David Weber? I think the thing I miss the most about it is, I, you know we made a good team and then we became a family and um yeah basic i know the show meant a lot to us individually and yeah gene um i echo the weber brothers a hundred percent um the camaraderie the friendships the love the respect but i've got to say um it's also rare especially uh for a uh, middle-aged actor uh, to come across uh, uh, such a role as Sam Bick. I mean, mm. you know, I spent a lot of time with this guy, you know, and uh, got into it. And uh, it's rare and it's wonderful. And man, I could have just, again, this is one of these roles that, that I could have just kept doing over and over. It was good. It would have killed me. It would have killed me. <laughs> but what a way to go out, you know? I mean, I, just, I, love, I love that, the role and, and the show and everyone. Awesome. Tim? I miss this amazing company. I miss the antics backstage and the <laughs> talent on stage. And, and I, I really miss looking another person in the eyes and saying, you should kill the president of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> and have it be completely appropriate. Yeah, Fourth of July. <laughs> My job. All right, Sean. Uh, I mimic everything that the cast was phenomenal. It was really fun to work with such an incredibly talented group of people. It was inspiring to watch a lot of you grow the entire time. And, and that that's always just awesome to watch from the, from the sides. And uh, I, I loved the character. I liked that it was uh, almost like a, a, a clean slate that we got to draw and draft in our own uh, kind of image. Uh, and working with Eddie to help try to create and flush out that that interesting character uh, and uh, I'll never forget that it was a wonderful experience the whole way through. Chris Voitko? Um, again like everybody else the caliber of the cast I mean just before we started rehearsals it was several months mm -hmm. that we were cast and just you just kept hearing oh my god look at that cast list look at that cast list this is gonna yeah. be amazing <laughs> And then actually getting into it and there's no attitude, no, you know, everyone's got experience, everybody's there and working and there's no problems, there's no attitude, there's no like, I'm better than you, like none of that, which, you know, that doesn't always happen. It was really nice. Paul? One of my favorite things to do during the show was to watch everyone else. Um, and it was difficult sometimes to go on stage knowing that your scene was going to come up and interrupting someone who had just done this awesome thing. And, and, and yeah, it's just, yeah, love you all. Everyone was great. Everyone, it, it's, it's just so inspiring to watch every one of you um, and, and do what you did. 
and come up with what you did. It was just, it's one of my favorite things that I've done in the last, in my 40 <clears throat> years of doing this. Matthew? Um, I really miss being the only kid because that was really fun. <laughs> I miss shooting that cat gun. That was really fun. Um, I miss running around backstage before every scene and getting to chill backstage, not get having to worry about getting changed quick because I was the lucky one. I was just sitting there. I could take 20 minutes, chill out, put my shirt on, walk around, get a drink of water. That was fun. Um, it was all just, I just miss having all that fun. I like having fun, I guess you say. So yeah, that was fun. Autumn? Well, um, I think there was just such a community of giving, like everybody that had anything to give tried to give what they could. So if there was a prop that we needed, oh, I have that at home, or like any, any information, like, oh, you're, you want that book? Oh, I have that at home, I'll pass it on to you. And and it was the sharing of our experiences and talent and like Chris said, none of, none of the attitude and such an encouraging place to work and to, um, and people to be around. And I think Eddie, your, your directing style, you just gave us so many questions to consider and so many, um, so many just thoughts to mull over as we were, con as we were coming to what our character was. Um, and, and that, that's also hard to come by. I think sometimes the actors want to just do their own thing and I'll do the research and you just tell me where to move on the stage. But I really appreciated the way in which we all just kind of gathered together to put something so special on and for us and for the audience that came to see it. Was, it was just magic. Oh, I have something to add. Yes. One thing I really miss, Eddie, was you demonstrating Ballad of Cholgosh. That oh, was yeah. so good. <laughs> Gotta keep that energy up. <laughs> oh my goodness. Lisa? High knees. High knees. High knees. High knees. Oh, I thought those high knees were gonna kill me. Um, a lot of uh, what I was going to say has already been said, so, but I'm gonna put it this way. Um, there was an intensity in this show that I don't think I've experienced in other shows, and partly it's the subject matter and partly it's the characters. But more than anything else, there was an intensity with each other. And it's the, what Autumn was talking about, the intensity of giving, there was the intensity of community, there was the intensity. And I, honest to God, fell in love with every single one of you. And what I miss the most is, is the loving, supportive hugging and the looking out for each other. And it was so intense. It was such hard work, but it was so worth it. And Eddie, you, you really did build a family and I miss, I miss my family. I miss you guys. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for joining us uh, tonight. I love each and every one of you. I can't wait to work with each and every one of you again. And k &E Theater Group looks to you guys as a family, part of our family. So I just, I just love all of you so much. And I thank you all for joining us and being here for the local spotlight series. It's, it's hard to get a bunch of, a bunch of people together. Um, and thank you for giving us your time during this very, very warm day. <laughs> 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 Woo! Very warm. Uh, How's Linda so, doing? <laughs> uh, Linda's doing okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so let's go out the way we came in. Dance break. Bye, everybody. Bye. And just like that, the Assassin's Pajama Party reunion is over. I love, admire, and cherish each and every one of those people. Uh, it was a thrill to work with them. I cannot wait to work with them again. Uh, and I hope that you guys enjoyed that little trip down memory lane, kind of a, an inside look at Assassins that k &E Theater Group, Group did back in November of 2019. Once again, if you feel inclined to donate, uh, if you're on Facebook, in the comment section below, there's a PayPal link. You can click on that. 
If you're not on Facebook or on IGTV, or you are on our YouTube channel, or you would like to donate later, you can always go to our website, KETG.org. You can uh, click on support KETG, and there's a donate button there. You can also sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you will also be able to see a lot of our upcoming 2021 season announced on that uh, website very shortly. So thank you again for sharing your night with us. Have a great night. Everybody's got the right to their dreams.